What's up, everybody? Working on the EG33, which is the Subaru SVX engine that is going in this lovely thing, which I lowered. I lowered the front of to make the front match the rear, and it's pretty fucking gangster. I'm super hyped on it, honestly. I haven't been as hyped on a car that I've owned in a really long time, and everything is, even though it's rusty, which kind of sucks, everything's coming together really nicely, and I'm happy. And this is great. This is the first car that I'm ever gonna have media blasted for myself or even a customer. So, there's a first time for everything. And I think this is a great car to do that. But anyways, got this, got a bunch of, got a whole gasket set, including head gaskets, which I don't think I'm gonna put on because I don't have head bolts and whatnot. Eventually I'll fucking go to head studs and whatever. Just fuck my life up. Uh, new water pump. There's a new timing belt somewhere. Maybe in that box. Uh, we got a lightweight flywheel, which is cool. Um, Gazzetti clutch. Uh, new thermostat, which I'm probably not going to use because I think I'm going to go with uh, what's called an external inline bypass thermostat. Um, some old dude that had a Subaru engine in a uh, Volkswagen van actually came by and recommended it to me. Um, so basically, instead of there just being a thermostat here and it's just a block off, um, it'll just be on the lines that are going towards the front. And when the thermostat's closed, it's cycling coolant back basically from this hose to that hose. When the thermostat opens, it stops doing that and it sends coolant to the radiator. So there's no hot spots in the engine and you don't do Subaru things like blow a head gasket. And also bleeding coolant a lot easier with that. Um, so we're going to tear it down, clean it up, uh, get rid of a lot of the vacuum lines, a lot of the unnecessary functions that I won't be using um, that I'll be showing you maybe do some minor porting work, uh, clean up the throttle bodies. Apparently porting the exhaust on these is a big upgrade. So I might do that and whatever else comes along, make this thing stop pissing oil out everywhere. So here's the underside of the intake manifold. Um, I did notice that three bolts on one side, I think it was, I think it was this side. These three bolts were like basically loose and I haven't loosened them yet. So they might've been leaking a little bit of vacuum there, whatever. Uh, so I will be deleting this. I don't know what this is. So I'll probably be deleting that, probably deleting those and getting rid of this, which is some sort of a, it's some sort of flapper valve that opens up in between the two halves at high RPM or something like that. I don't know. We're getting rid of it. That's unnecessary. Um, I'll figure out what this is, but that's probably going. The alternator bracket is gonna get cleaned up a lot. Um, I'll probably, Maybe leave this side and then just take this side off and just make this adjustable because um, I'm just going to be running an alternator. So it'll just be whoop and then you just adjust it with some sort of heim joint setup. Um, basically everything is deleted. That's getting deleted. Uh, I'm going to simplify the fuel lines and vacuum lines. Get rid of what's unnecessary. Also, I noticed most of the vacuum lines are pretty crispy. Um, also, really weird. These are 270cc injectors, similar to that of a KA. And if I can get one unplugged, it's basically a KA injector. Super weird. Side feed, 270cc. This looks just like a KA alternator. A lot of this looks like 240 parts. It's super weird to me. This engine is basically a Nissan engine that we don't want to claim because it sucks.
It's 3.30 a.m. And that's my progress. Pretty good. I'm going to try to finish this up tomorrow. We'll see what happens. So here's the motor, freshly power washed. Um, it's still really dirty in some spots. Uh, I'm gonna use some aluminum cleaner and uh, brush and get most of that shit off. Uh, Cause I want it to be really clean. Um, and in case you're wondering, the reason this is open and this is like, these are taped shut is because I don't want water in the cylinders, but a little bit of water in the oil pan area isn't a big deal. Cause that'll all be cleaned out and drained and everything. Um, and then same with somewhere. Uh, this right here, I don't want water in the oil system, like where the oil pump is, high pressure oil, because that'll send it everywhere into the bearings and that's not good. So that's blocked off, but that is not a big deal. You know, try not to spray directly in there. Probably just wipe that off by hand and I'm gonna blow it out with the air gun and clean all that up. So it'll be, it'll be nice and rust free and then a little coat of oil will be fine. I cannot believe how clean this engine is. It is, especially from how dirty it was before. Not too clean in there, but whatever. So clean. Need to port these. Not a huge deal, I can do that whenever. And then here is the gasket set. Not doing the head gaskets, and they are damaged. So, Sorry. oh, you're good. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing this. I don't know what gaskets these are. I'm gonna. F I don't know what's what. I'm I'm lost. They they just threw all of this in a box, and they're like, here, good luck. And I'm like, thanks. Thank you. So, all this needs to go on now. So this right here is the flapper valve, which goes right there. Um, at low RPM, it divides the intake halves, and then at high RPM, it opens up like that and combines the intake halves. I don't know what it does. Um, I don't feel like trying to tune that into the Mega Squirt. Um, so I'm just gonna cut that off and delete it, and it'll be fine, hopefully. For the alternator, I kind of, I didn't really make this, a uh, buddy of mine actually made this and I got it on an engine that I bought from him. Um, and it is just the adjuster so you can tension the belt. Uh, some random belt that I picked up at the parts store. I got this uh, oil pressure sensor, which is three wires. One of them is gonna go to the Mega Squirt. So I'll be able to use the Mega Squirt to control my oil, or not really to control, but to see my oil pressure. Um, I'll have the same thing for fuel pressure for no reason other than diagnostics and data logging and seeing why my engine blew up after it's already too late. Um, but this is the current final state. The valve covers aren't super clean and the intake manifold isn't perfect because I'm getting both of them powder coated, which I'll show you that color in a second. But I think it's pretty sweet. I didn't put the cover, the rear covers or the front covers on the outsides of the timing belt just because it didn't look good. I put this cover because it has the timing marks, so it's kind of necessary, I guess. I don't know. Who knows? 
Let me scoot this thing out. And there you can see everything's deleted underneath. There was a bunch of solenoids and whatnot. A bunch of useless shit. Uh, also got rid of those. Uh, got rid of the throttle body heater lines. I'll probably end up chopping this down because I'm not going to have cruise control, obviously. I don't know if I'm going to be running this piece because it kind of looks good with it. But kind of looks good without it. So I don't know. We'll figure that out later. But this is going to be the last you see of this until it goes in the car, which might be a little while. I'm not sure. It's a bit hard to capture, but this is what the intake manifold valve covers are going to be. Um, it's a wrinkled red, so it's got a little bit of texture to it. Um, it'll look a lot like the Subaru STI intake manifolds, which is kind of what I'm going for, along with, you know, some red accenting to go with the red accents on the car. And this thing sucks. Don't get one of these if you have a fly problem. And that is all. Be sure to subscribe so you can keep watching me do stuff to this thing. Uh, I don't know if I showed you guys that I lowered the front, but I lowered the front. And I think it looks pretty sweet. Looks gangster. Don't, uh, I don't have the front fenders on yet, so I don't know what the wheel sizes are gonna be, but I know we're gonna be 11 wide in the rear, nine five or nine up front maybe. Who knows what offset. We're getting there, little by little.